So we're here with the contender. Uh, I'm redoing the rigging and I thought it'd be a good opportunity maybe to go through this rigging, go through like a little bit of the concept behind it and uh, how I've made it work for my small boat. So I'll, I guess I'll preface this and say that I didn't come up with this concept, fish with people who are a lot more experienced, a lot better than I am. It's mainly a video to show how I've, uh, I guess, adapted it uh, to this small center console. So yeah, I'll take the opportunity to re-rig them. Uh, the main thing that I'm trying to get out of this is I'm trying to get them tight, like really tight, guitar string tight. So you can see on this side, the other side I've already done, it's, uh, it's just got a single release. I mainly fish solo, only run two lures, one teaser. So on the, the right rigger, I only need one release. Left side, you can see here I've got two lines, uh, one out to the end, it's going to be for my lure, and then this short rigger position here, that's what I run my teaser off. So I'm going to replace it with exactly the same that I've got here, but I'm going to try and make it so these are tensioned evenly. Alright, so you'll see here I've got these how um, how locks essentially once you lock those in they'll just stop the, the line coming back down um, and so I'm going to keep these and just replace the line and then once I cut this off you'll see I'm just going to do a slightly different setup where I'm going to roll uh, two clips two different weights kind of for a bit of redundancy and um, that's pretty much it keep it simple okay so I've got heaps of line here so I can waste a little bit cork ball just to stop uh, you rigging jamming in that last uh, roller there this is the the setup that I'm gonna run so it is just the two say black style clips as I said just one for say redundancy and um, they'll be set to two different weights and then I'll, I'll check these with uh, with scales and then I'll know that they're gonna break away at exactly the same uh, the same weight each time, the same tension. All right, so what I sort of, what one of the beauties of this cam lock system is the mono is going to stretch over time. So I'm gonna leave enough sort of slack here that I can tighten it over time and I don't have to re-rig this. So I've done the one over the other side and I've started off about here, maybe about 200 mil of slack and then over time I can just pull that tighter. So, we'll Aim for about there. Looks pretty good to me. So this is where it gets tricky because you're trying to adjust the same tension as what you've got on the other side. lock this off it'll probably make it easy I reckon there was more so I've got my distance there that I'm happy with that's pretty tight when I did it on the other side I was unable to tension this anymore and I can there so I'm just gonna do it a little bit tighter tighter the better that's more like it pretty much it for 
I guess both the long riggers, it's just the short rigger. You can see here, uh, I run my electric, which will have a teaser. Um, run it. Through there and up through the ring, and then it'll run down to my teaser position there. Works pretty well. Definitely not an idea, once again, that I came up with. Much the same on that short rigger position. Um, a lot of people just run the teaser through a ring. Uh, just to reduce a little bit of resistance, I run a pulley off the ring and the teaser through there. Works both ways, I figured. If that dies, I can pull it off and I've still got the ring. That's my... That's my um, left short or left teaser setup. You can see that this is where I ran my, run my halyard line. You know, what a lot of people would do is they'd tie onto here, but then you're relying on on tying it, you're going to lose tension. That's why I've, I've wrapped it around here and then it comes through and you've got your cam locks in here and they're real easy to pull tension, pull line through, maintain tension. As I said, you get a bit of, you get a bit of leeway to tighten over time, which is, uh, which is pretty good. So real good system, can pretty much make it work on any small boat, that's why I like it. I don't actually see it too much. Go to a yachting store, these things are like 30 bucks, they're great. Uh, the other part to this, this system is I've got lines, like bracing lines for the riggers at the front. Just once again, you know, stiff, they're held both ways. They're pulled from the front and they're pulled from the back as well as like, you know, locking in here, but I want to try and keep a bit of tension off here. So that's part of the system. Once again, I've just got hooks that I hook on and you can see that it's like, for an 18 foot rigger, it's pretty bloody stiff. Um, one thing I will show you is like, obviously they're great like this, but, but running is, um, yeah it's pretty easy to put them into a running configuration. So you can drop the tension. Pull this up. Lock them in and then using the same cam cleats, this is why I love them. And I'll just tension them here, properly pull them down, and they're gonna bounce a heap less when you're running. Keep these down here as well. And like, that, that's a pretty, that's a pretty bloody sweet system, if you ask me. Works really well, haven't had an issue, um, yeah. And that's it, that's pretty much, that's how I run the riggers on my, my little contender. Uh, I'll run through the setup. These are like, I guess a RUP outrigger base. Um, you can see them on top. They're integrated into the T-top, which is pretty cool. Uh, the boat came with it. <laughs> so yeah, I can't take any credit for the choice there. Um, mainly controlled by this. Um, that allows you to rotate them. What we've got, we've got 18, 18 foot carbon riggers, precision. Uh, if, you, if they're unrigged, you can hold the 18 foot pole out straight. Like they're seriously light and they're rated, their strength at the base is something like 300 kilos they can lift. So I haven't heard of any snapping. I don't know if I would want to see them snapping, but I'm not particularly worried about it. 18 foot on a boat like this is probably ideal. You'd always want to go like longer, longer and taller if you can, but I, I thought that was a pretty good middle ground. Uh, one thing I will 
touch on is American bases, Australian made outrigger poles. These are narrower, it's a bit of a pain. It, it's hard to find these poles and when you put them in here, they bounce around. I couldn't really think of anything worse than I guess fiddling with like a bolt to sit through these. So what I've done is I've gotten, I've tried multiple different types, but I've just gotten heat shrink and put it over the ends. Just added a little bit of width and really like packed out. They're pretty bloody tight to get in and out and it just stops that shaking. Uh, I think the, the heat shrink may stop some of the scuffing on the carbon, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the way it is, like it works, I can just pull them out at the end of the day and um, yeah, the same goes for the beginning. I guess one of the things that's worth touching on is, um, is why don't they run down to the gunnels? The previous owner of this boat, he did run them down, ran them through here. Uh, if they're down here, it's obviously a heap easier to clip your lines on. So why run them up the top? Ooh, I guess if they're down here, you lose that 360 degree fishability. I mean, to me, that's why I have a center console. Yeah, they're up higher, but being tall helps. So once they're up here, you've got a fish on, you know, you got no problems. Moving around here, you're not having to go around your lines or unhook them and shoot through. It's just up here, it's out of the way. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really consider ever running them through the gunnels on a center console.